Good Tuesday evening to everyone. Hope everybody's had a great week so far. And uh, tonight we're going to look at uh, something that, you know, with all the, the events taking place in Israel and with Iran and uh, Syria and all these other countries, uh, I want to talk about the land of Israel. And what does the Bible say about it? See, before there was any Hebrews, before there was any Jewish people, there was a man called Abram. And uh, if you got your Bible, go to Genesis chapter 12. In verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thee thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Then look at verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there build he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And, uh, and then go over to chapter 13. In chapter 13, let's read verses 14 through 18. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward and southward, and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Verse 17. Arise, walk through the land, the length of it, and in the breath of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, came and dwelled in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Now, if you look at a present day map, the land that belongs to Israel, as of right now, is equivalent to the state of New Jersey, which is the fifth smallest state in the uh, United States. And uh, if you was to take the area that God had showed to Abram, and belongs to Israel, to the people thereof, it would take about half of Jordan. It would take part of Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt. Uh, and that's also they would be taken back over the Gaza Strip, uh, the West Bank, and the Golan Heights. And uh, that's why it's so contested. That's why the Arab world hates Israel. Because Israel, the land belongs to them. And yet, they don't want them to own anything. Now, from 1517 to 1917, 
the Ottoman uh, Empire ruled over that area. And uh, at the end of World War One, Great Britain took control over what was to become known as Palestine, or modern-day Israel, Palestine, Jordan, and then uh, they made the Balfour Declaration, which was a British mandate over Palestine, which was approved by the League of Nations in 1922. The British controlled Palestine control Palestine until Israel, in the years followed, the end of World War II, became an independent state in 1947. That's when they took back control. And in May of 1948, Israel was officially declared an independent state with David Ben-Gurion uh, as Prime Minister. Now, as I said, the Arab world was all out of sorts. And that's why uh, tomorrow evening I'm going to go into the prophetic end of what's going to take place, which will be right in the millennium time period, right at the end of the tribulation going into the millennium. But yet, you had the Arab Israeli was with Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, and Israel. Um, or Lebanon. And the ceasefire agreement had been reached in 1949. Uh, with West Bank become or become part of Jordan, and then uh, uh, the Gaza Strip became part of the Egyptian territory. And it's just like with the Gaza Strip, there. Uh, Radfa, where uh, they were claiming that Israel wasn't letting the people cross over into Egypt. We well, see Israel don't control that border. They weren't there controlling it. That was done by the Hamas and the Egyptians. And that Gaza Strip is part of Egypt. Then in 1967, you had the Six-Day War. And that's when Israel, as small as they were, they defeated Egypt, they defeated Jordan and Syria, and Israel took back control of the Gaza Strip, the Sinai Pits, uh, Peninsula, uh, the West Bank, and the Golan Heights. Now, I want to read you a verse of scripture out of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 5. You say, well, this is Old Testament. Well, what we read there in chapter 12 and chapter 13, God himself was given Abram the land deed to the nation of Israel. And in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 5, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Now, fathers was plural. If you read in the Bible, often they'll say, well, I'm of the 
father Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, they was looking, that's the fathers that Moses was talking about right here. Because Abram was the deed holder. He's the one that God gave control of the land. And then through him came Isaac. And from Isaac came Jacob. And Jacob, God changed his name to Israel. Which means uh, having uh, favor with God. Or wrestles with God. There are several different terminologies there. And yet, that's why you look at now, this is, that is where the Muslim depart. They, they disagree because instead of going through Isaac and Jacob, they go through Ishmael to get their belief. And Ishmael was illegitimate to be able to have received or been an heir of the deed of the land because Ishmael's mom was not Abram's wife. Sarah was Abram's wife. And, uh, and Sarah had a moment when she feared it wasn't ever going to happen because they was getting on up in years. I mean, when, when God first called Abram, he was done 75 years old. And so waited around and nothing happened. And Sarah said, well, take my handmaid. And he did, and she gave birth to Ishmael. Then Sarah realized she'd messed up. And God, because of it, made him wait another 25 years before Sarah ever gave birth to Isaac. So the, the Muslims, or a lot of the Arabs, along in the Muslim belief, followed the lineage of Ishmael instead of the legitimate Isaac and Jacob from Abram. And, uh, but yet, that's why when uh, Moses said, The Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, he was talking about Abram, Isaac, and Jacob whose name was changed to Israel. And, uh, and from that point on. So when you look at the time of everything, let me see right quick, like I want, if I can pull up the, the map on everything happened. Uh, I didn't even think about doing that earlier. Uh, so Abram would have been born at 2165 and Isaac was born in 2065 that's BC so and Jacob was born in 2006 BC so over as of now has been over 4,000 years and uh, with that said 4,000 years the land was deeded by God to Abram through his descendants which is the Hebrew people the Jewish people and uh, and that, that is why it is one of the focal points 
you know, often we talk about uh, tribulation and everything going on. And if you fail to watch what is going on in Israel, then you're going to miss what the Bible tells us about because Israel is the focal point. Tribulation, everything is focused on Israel, what has happened. Uh, I don't want to get into it today, but I'm going to show you how as Israel has been downsized from what is needed to them. They're just a portion of what they should be. So tomorrow evening, I'm going to get into that and show you how they're going to be restored and what takes place in between that and their restoration. Um, you know, flip over to Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. You know, a lot of times you'll see uh, every once in a while newspapers or flyers will come in the mail about people on having land that they may be unaware of. And if you're unaware of it, how can you take care of it? And that is why the the Hebrews have diligently tried to make certain that they've got everything that is needed. And uh, if you're with me in uh, Ezekiel 36, let's read verse 26 through 28. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you a heart, uh, give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, cause you to walk in my statues, and you shall keep them, keep my judgments, and do them. Verse twenty-eight, and you shall dwell in the land. That I gave your to your fathers, you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Now, there's over 23 verses of Scripture that relates to the land of Israel. Now, we just hit just a few verses of it. Genesis 12 and 13 and Deuteronomy and Ezekiel. But there is a tremendous amount of scripture about it. And most of it's going to come to pass in between the beginning of tribulation and the millennium, which is the thousand year reign that Jesus is going to come and he's going to set rule and reign upon his throne will be in Jerusalem. You know, that is one of the things that really ticked a lot of Arabs off was when President Trump officially made Jerusalem as the capital by moving the embassy there. Because they, they don't want the Israels to control because they got that in the West Bank. That belongs to Israel. 
just like Jordan. Jordan, they would. They's been so many wars, infidatas, uh, uprisings by the Hamas, the the Muslims, the Arabs, over the years. Uh, since they took over and became a, uh, recognized as state in uh, 1967, is that Jordan, as I said at the beginning, Jordan would be half the size of it is now. And Jordan would be, that would make it a small, small country. But yet, they got the agreement that where the Jordan River goes down, that that would become the border from Israel and Jordan. When the fact of the matter is that you would go halfway across after you got across the Jordan River, halfway across the country of Jordan, that belongs to Israel. Same with the, the southern part of Syria, the southern part of Lebanon, and the northern part of Egypt. All that belongs to Israel. It belongs to God's people, the Hebrews. And there is coming a day that they are going to possess every square inch of it. And they nothing, nobody going to be doing nothing about it. So, I just tried to give you just a little bit. And like I said, they've had so many uh, skirmishes over the year, just like with what's going on around right now with Hamas. It's an ongoing thing. It's never ending. It won't end till the millennium. And... Again, as I said, tomorrow evening I'll try to show what will take place. And so I'm going to close here tonight. You know, the main thing, when we study the history of the Bible, and you can look back and, and people say, well, the Bible doesn't in, in history. Well, over the years... It has proven time and time again that it is the most actual and factual book of history there is. And uh, through all of it, you learn several things. One is God's unconditional love for his people. Does he love sin? Absolutely not. And he tells us the cost of sin. As we're looked at, if we're not Jewish, as a Gentile, we've been grafted in. That's by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ because his people, the Jewish people, failed to accept him when he came as the suffering Messiah. That's why right now can be the greatest day of your life. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, do it now. Because who knows what tomorrow brings. You know, a lot of people, just like over in, in Israel, when they first was attacked and those, uh, what, 1,400 people were killed, in a matter of hours, and uh, was, and I know that at one place they was having a big outdoor uh, concert. Do you think they went knowing that that was going to be their last day? No. They probably had plans for the following day and the following week and the following month. And there's nothing wrong with us having plans, but the one thing that is wrong, if we go through every day without having been born again and accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, accepting what he did on the cross, 
But if you know Jesus, if you accept him, then whether today's the last day that I live here on earth, I know I'll enter into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ forever. You can be sure your own self by repenting and accepting Jesus. And Jesus made it simple. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he died for your sins, that he rose on the third day, he ascended up to heaven, and is sitting with the Father right now. And if you believe him, you'll believe the Bible, and your life will change. So let's just pray together. We'll pray a simple prayer. And believe it. You know, um, the greatest day of my life was just a little over 33 years ago when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord, Lord and Savior. And he took and turned me completely around. And I wouldn't take nothing for it. I just wish that I'd done it 30 years earlier. So don't wait till it's too late. So let's pray together. Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. I believe that's why you went to the cross to pay my sin debt. Lord, I also ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that from this day forward, you can lead me and guide me and help me to live the rest of my life giving you honor and glory. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed it and you meant it, God will work your turn your life completely around. Um, keep an eye on each, uh, Israel watch. And again, tomorrow we will get into the coming events that will take place. I invite you to come join us Sunday morning, 11, 10, usually when we get started out here at Mountain Horse Church. And if that is if you don't have a home church. If you got a home church, be there. If you don't, our doors is open. I hope that and pray that everyone has a great night. I look forward to being back with you tomorrow evening at 6.30. And may God use you and bless you greatly in the name of Jesus. God bless. See you tomorrow evening.